The purpose of service design is to design IT services in alignment with governing policies, IT practices, and processes. Another purpose of service design is to understand the service provider's strategy so that these services can be incorporated into the supported environment, ensure high-quality service is delivered and cost-effective service provision and customer satisfaction is achieved. The objective of service design is to design IT services efficiently and effectively to avoid major improvements, identify changing trends in business, which may lead to opportunities for the improvement of services and solutions, and ensure that continual service improvement is included in all service design activities to sustain their effectiveness. The scope of service design is to interpret and design new existing or modified business requirements, management information systems and tools, technology, management, and architecture systems, measurement methods and metrics, and all processes essential for effective service design. Service design offers benefits to business such as lower total cost of ownership, TCO, of services, improved quality of service delivery, improved consistency of the service as services are designed within the corporate strategy, architectures, and constraints, simpler implementation of new or modified services, improved services being aligned with the needs of the business, improved effectiveness of performances with incorporation and recognition of capacity, financial availability, and IT service continuity plans, and improved IT administration. In the next screen, we will discuss the responsibilities of a process manager in the service design phase. Two key roles in the service design phase are the process manager and the process practitioner. The responsibilities of the process manager include collaborating with the process owner to plan and coordinate process activities, managing the resources assigned to each process, coordinating with other process managers and service owners for smooth running of services, working with the process owner and the CSI manager to check and prioritize improvements in the CSI register, and ensuring that all activities under process are carried out as required throughout the service lifecycle and improvements are made in their implementations. In the next screen, we will discuss the responsibilities of the process practitioner. The responsibilities of the process practitioner include ensuring all activities are carried out in a process, working with stakeholders, process managers, coworkers, users, and customers to ensure that their contributions are effective, ensuring inputs, outputs, and interfaces for activities in a process are correct, and creating and maintaining records to ensure that tasks are executed correctly. There are four P's or attributes that drive the concept of IT service design. They are partner or supplier, people, product or technology, and process. The partner or supplier perspective takes into account the importance of the relationship between the organization and the partner or external supplier, which contributes to service delivery. The people perspective includes IT staff, customers, and other stakeholders. For example, it involves identifying whether the staff has the required knowledge and skills to perform their roles. The product or technology perspective takes into account IT services, technology, and tools. The process perspective relates to the end-to-end -end delivery of a service based on the process flow. It includes activities, responsibility assignment matrix, also called RACI, and dependencies. Quality IT service management ensures that all four perspectives are taken into account as part of the continual service improvement of the IT organization. When designing new or modified services, these four perspectives are considered and catered in order to ensure success in service design, transition, and eventual adoption by customers. In the next screen, we will discuss the service design package. A service design package, or SDP, helps document all aspects of an IT service. It is produced when a new IT service is offered or a major change is expected in an IT service. It is also produced when an IT service is retired. The SDP should be created during the design stage and passed to the service transition stage. An SDP starts with documenting the business requirements of an IT service 
for each stage of the service lifecycle. It also includes service applicability and contacts such as customer contacts and functional and service level requirements. Other components of an SDP are service acceptance criteria, service design and topology, service transition plan and program, service operational acceptance plan, and organizational readiness. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.